With vMix, you can take your audio and send different parts or mixes of it just about anywhere you can think of. You can send a specific audio mix to your primary stream, a different language to a secondary stream, another mix to your front of house speakers, and something else to your talent or a caller. You can also output and record audio with up to 16 individual channels, which is very handy for post-production editing. To do all this and more, we'll be looking at, or rather listening to, audio buses. Hey there, I'm Heath from vMix. If this is your first time watching a vMix video, welcome. We have a lot of training videos and this one assumes you know your way around vMix reasonably well. So if you start to struggle, take a look at one of the intro videos that I've linked in the description. You can also download our top tier vMix Pro trial that you can use without any limits or watermarks for 60 days for free. vMix comes in a few varieties from basic HD right up to Pro and Max depending on your needs. But we've included the full range of audio buses in every edition, so this is relevant to anyone using vMix that needs greater control over their audio. The buses are all noted in the settings of vMix under the Audio Output section. Here we can see that there are buses A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Now, there are many ways to think about and use audio buses, but here are two key ways to think about them. One, every audio bus is a different audio mix with a different destination. For example, we could set our stream to use a specific mix using our master bus, while our talent or show host could listen to a specific audio mix on bus A, and a caller into the show might only need to hear the talent's microphone, so we could send them that alone on bus B. The second way of thinking about audio buses is that it allows you to send out or record a bunch of different audio mixes in a multi-channel format, allowing you to edit and adjust the audio of each mix outside of vMix, rather than just having one stereo mix with everything together. This is often handy in post-production if you want to adjust audio for certain aspects of your recording without affecting the rest of the audio. Now, if any of this isn't making sense yet, don't worry, We'll work through both right now. Audio buses are dedicated stereo audio channels, which means for every bus, you have a left and right channel. As I briefly showed you before, in vMix, there are seven dedicated buses, A through G, and then there's the master bus, which makes for eight buses. Now, because each of these buses is a stereo bus with a left and right channel, this means we have 16 channels of audio available to use in vMix. This is what the buses look like in our audio mixer output section. Now, you might have just said, wait, I don't have those in my version of vMix. Well, that's probably because they aren't enabled by default. And the reason for that is because they take up precious real estate in the interface if they aren't needed for your production. So your audio mixer outputs might look a little bit more like this with just the master output showing. So let's change that and enable some buses. As a first step, we'll go to the settings. And now we'll click on Audio Outputs. And here we can see those buses are set to None. If we set the first four to Enabled, then click OK, and accept the restart of vMix. Once we restart, they will appear in our audio mixer. As a special note, you must accept the restart of vMix for audio output changes to work. If you don't, the changes will not be applied and things won't work correctly for you. Okay, we now have some new audio buses in our audio mixer output, A, B, C, and D. We'll now need some inputs with audio that we can manage using our newly available audio buses. Here are a few I prepared earlier for a news program that we want to live stream. Let's imagine I'm producing the news program so I have my camera with my microphone embedded. This allows me to direct the talent. I also have a news anchors camera with embedded audio, a news intro video, a news outro video, and some soft music to run under the show. And finally, a field reporter named Bob. Bob's coming in on a vMix call. If you're not familiar with the vMix call feature, it allows you to bring up to eight live callers into your production depending on the version of vMix you're using. You can check out our video about vMix call in the description. All right, in this scenario, I'll list three destinations where we might want to send a unique mix of audio. First, we have the main show audio that we want to live stream and probably record as well. We'll want the audio mix to include our anchor, the two videos, and the music underlay, as well as Bob. So assigning these to the master bus is a good idea. 
What we don't want to hear in the master mix is my audio because I'm the producer calling out the directions to the talent, but I'm not part of the finished product. So we'll remove my audio from the master channel by clicking on the M button right here so that it turns off. Next, we have the audio we want to send to our news anchor. He might want to hear the intro and outro audio as prompts for when he's live. So we can assign these to bus A by clicking here and here. We'll also want to add my audio so that I can talk to him as the producer. So I'll click there. And last but not least, we'll add Bob. Finally, let's decide what audio we want to send Bob. Bob doesn't need to hear the intro and outro audio, but he will need to hear our news anchor, and he also needs to hear me as the producer. So we'll pop these two audio inputs onto a bus for Bob. Now, imagine that I was already using bus B for something else. So that would mean the next bus available for Bob is bus C. But now you might be asking, how do I add things to bus C? Only M, A, and B are showing. Well, all you need to do is right click on any of the other buses and you'll see all of your other enabled buses there and you can tick and untick them. So once again, we'll right click on a bus of our anchors audio input and tick C. Then we'll right click a bus on my audio input and tick C as well. And there we go. We've now created three different audio mixes and assigned them to the master, bus A and bus C. The master for our stream and recording bus A for our anchor to hear, and bus C for Bob to hear. Actually, while we're here, in the audio mixer, there's also a button labeled S for every audio source. S stands for solo, and so if we click on one of these, we can solo just that bus or audio source. And this allows us to check that the audio sounds as we expect. Additionally, it's possible to send a bus to the master channel. The main reason why you might do this is if you have a few audio sources that you want to control the volume for together on a single bus before they are fed to the master for your stream or your recording. Now, there is one special note I'll add for whenever you send a bus to master. If you have any vMix callers that are listening on your master channel, they will not hear any buses you have routed to master. So just keep that in mind. So now that we have all of our audio buses set up, it's time to route them to the right destinations. For the master bus, this is going to our stream and our recording. So here under the stream settings, we can click on the quality settings and make sure that our audio channels are set to master. And then we can click save and then save and close. And the same goes in the recording settings. We go to the audio dropdown list and set this to master if it isn't already. Be sure to click OK to save these settings. Next, if we want to send audio to our news anchor, we can go back to the vMix settings, click on audio outputs again, and rather than just having bus A enabled, instead, we can select a connected audio device, such as a monitor with speakers or a USB audio interface, for example. For this video, I'll go out to a monitor with speakers and I'll click OK. And now I'll accept that restart again. And finally, for Bob, because he's a vMix caller, we just need to right click his input and set the audio source there to bus C. And that's that. We've now routed all of our input audio to our buses and we've routed the bus audio out to destinations. So our stream and recording has the master audio, our anchor has his mix, and Bob has his mix. I'm sure there's plenty of other mixes that you might want to put on different buses, and these will depend on the type of production you're running. You might want to set up a separate bus that contains all audio sources, including the producer's microphone for teaching and training purposes. Or you might want to set up a bus for a secondary language stream, in fact, we have a video that goes through sending different audio to multiple streams that covers this scenario, so I've popped that in the description. Next up, let's see how to create a multi-channel audio output that we can record or send out a vMix. Doing this can be useful if you need your audio separated for post-editing in programs like Adobe Premiere Pro. If we go to the recording settings and back under the audio dropdown, 
you'll see that you can pick multiple buses to be included in your recording. So let's return to my news program example and rewind it back to where we started. Here are a few I prepared earlier, but this time, let's imagine we're recording our news program so that we can make some post-recording edits before publishing it to our streaming provider. In this scenario, we might want to record the audio from our intro and outro videos, as well as the soft music underlay on the master bus. Then the audio from our news anchor on bus A, and the audio from Bob on bus B. This way, if later on we decide we need to add some noise filtering to Bob or need to adjust our anchor's volume a little, we can do this without impacting the other channels of the audio. Let's do that now. We'll leave the intro and outro video along with the music on master, and we'll turn it off for the remaining inputs. Now we'll add the news anchor to bus A and Bob to bus B. And with that done, we'll return to the recording settings. Now, different video formats allow for different amounts of audio channels. I'll show you that now by selecting MP4 and then picking the full suite of buses here and clicking OK. Here we get an error message telling us that the MP4 video format does not support more than six channels of audio. So that is equivalent to three buses. But here are some important things to be aware of. Six channel audio for formats like MP4 and AVI are typically set up for 5.1 surround sound, which incorporates audio in different positions in space and a low frequency or bass channel for the subwoofer. Be wary of editing programs interpreting six channel audio as 5.1 surround sound by mistake. You can overcome this by using vMix AVI or you can go with any format and then tick the WAV file record option to separately record your multi-channel audio and then piece it back together with your video in post. To keep things simple though, I'm gonna go with vMix AVI. And because I've set up the M, A and B buses for multi-channel recording, I'll pick MAB. I'll then click OK to save those settings. Now it's time to record this production by pressing the record button. And once the show is over, I'll press it again to end the recording. I'll make sure you can hear all the buses, but normally you would only be able to hear the master unless you were soloing a specific bus. Also, I'll apologize for the quality of this news program now. We interrupt your regularly scheduled report to bring you this special news program. A fad is taking the world by storm. It's making changes globally. We cross over to Bob in the field to learn more. Ah uh, yes, Bob reporting live. And I want to tell you about the importance of wearing beige jackets. Yes, beige jackets. They are definitely very popular at the moment, as you can see. Yes, beige jackets. Thanks very much. Back to you in the studio. Well, thank you for that, Bob. We look forward to hearing more as things develop. Okay, we now have our video recorded with six channel audio. So now if we go and open it in something like Adobe Premiere Pro, we'll see these six channels right here and we can manipulate each independently. What you will always find is that M will be channels one and two a will be channels 3 and 4, and B will be channels 5 and 6. And yep, you probably guessed it. If we were recording all 16 channels, then bus G would be channel 15 and 16. Recording multi-channel audio is one option, but in vMix, you can also output this audio to specific output devices that support multi-channel audio. AJA and Blackmagic Design both make output cards that allow you to output up to eight channels, so you would use M, A, B, and C if you wanted to use all eight. Now, I've connected our AJA IO X3 to demonstrate this with our six channels of audio on M, A, and B. So I'll go to Settings, and then I'll go to External Output, and here, I'll tick the external renderer. An external renderer is basically an output card. Now I'll go to my devices and pick the IOX3 output one for the video feed. And for the audio channels, 
I'll pick MAB and finally I'll click OK. So now, just like with our recording, when I start our external output, we'll be sending that multi-channel audio out of our output device for other hardware to receive and manipulate as required. This might be useful for multilingual feeds, where certain channels are turned on or muted downstream depending on the language desired. Righto, that's audio buses and a handful of ways to use them. Now, we know that people have found amazing uses for these buses, so if you have one, feel free to share it in the comments so that other vMix users can develop their skills and improve their productions too. And speaking of improving vMix skills, if you want to know more about audio buses or any other vMix topic, you can visit our website at vmix.com to check out our training videos, help files, and knowledge base articles. You can also send us an email from there. One thing I would ask is that you don't seek support in the comments below because we struggle to provide you with really good help there. And that's it. Hopefully this video has opened your eyes, or your ears, to some great audio solutions for your future productions. I'll see you on the next one.